بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Back to my courses of macroeconomics We are discussing chapter 1 for GDP And GDP stands for gross domestic products Actually this video is just a continuation to the previous one In which we already covered several questions So we'll go ahead with our questions uh, We actually already looked at what is economy and what is economics We developed key principles and definitions of economics we looked at how to measure success of an economy there are actually plenty of uh, measures but we covered some uh, we examined factors of production and finally economic systems so if you want to cover this point you can watch my previous video uh, i provided here with the link okay so in this video actually we're going to see what are the economic statements we'll uh, also cover uh, the concepts of microeconomics versus macroeconomics what they are all about and we're going also to uh, overview macroeconomic goals and indicators and we'll give i mean a snapshot the five sectors uh, within an economy and finally we'll define gdp versus uh, gnp okay so let's get started i start with economic statements what are those economic statements they are of number two two sorry uh positive statements and uh, normative statements positive statements are facts or statements which can be proven actually some they can be uh, proven to be true i mean and some others can be proven to be uh, false statements okay in which case we say false statements uh, normative statements are those statements that cannot be proven they are linked to opinions or value judgments however predictions are neither positive nor normative statements Predictions such as Morocco will host the World Cup, the event of World Cup uh, 26th, for example, or unemployment will fall under a threshold of a 5% next month, are neither um, positive statement nor normative statement because they are unrelated to facts uh, that can be proven, nor they are related to opinions or value judgments. Okay? I'll give some examples of positive statements. For example, legalizing drugs will lower the price of drugs and reduce the drug profits that illegal drug dealers make. This is a positive trend, true positive statement. Second example, the federal government experienced a budget surplus this past year. This is a false positive statement, but by definition, a positive is a positive statement. I mean, it keeps being a positive statement. False because it has been proven that, is, that this one is a false uh, statement. An increase in taxation will result in less consumption. Normative statement examples, such as laborers should receive greater part of capitalism profits. This is just, uh, I mean, uh, a recommendation or an opinion, okay? Should. Working citizens should not pay for hospital care. The government should raise taxes and lower government spending to reduce the budget deficits. So as you noticed in the three examples, we are using this should or ought, in which case we are uh, just giving, I mean, a recommendation or an advice. Uh, so they are then called normative statements. Now, let's look at what microeconomics is and what macroeconomics is. Actually, and apparently from the brief overview uh, that I gave, it is crystal clear that the subject of economics is a very broad, is uh, just like a physical wall that is divided into uh, physics and chemistry. Likewise, economics is divided into fields comprised of closely related topics, the two major fields of economics are microeconomics and macroeconomics. Okay? Microeconomics is concerned with the behavior of individual units in the economy. It studies the small components of the economy, such as businesses and, uh, I mean, uh, and households. Macroeconomics, however, is concerned with economic aggregates and the economy's overall performance, the big picture of the economy. So if microeconomics looks like a tree macroeconomics looks like a forest okay so here we we see also some stairs maybe they are built up um, by the government <laughs> okay uh, microeconomics is the study of how markets function okay for example 
how do the prices of airline tickets get determined in the Moroccan economy? Uh, in private enterprise economies, I mean in capitalist economies, it is primarily in the marketplace that the three fundamental economic decisions are made. What are the fundamental economic questions or decisions? So they are uh, in a number three, what will be produced, how will be it be produced, and who will consume it. Okay. Now, microeconomics focuses on trying to understand efforts that affect the whole economy. Okay. So, for example, we have three here. We can add the fourth. For example, economic growth. Uh, the indicator can be uh, the GDP, so increase in, the GD in GDP as a goal. Price stability, for example, having a moderate inflation. Full employment for no or little unemployment rates, to reduce the unemployment rate. The fourth can be added, for example, uh, balance rate, having a positive balance rate. So those goals, they turn into indicators such as GDP, inflation, etc. And those are also aggregates. Um, okay, so now let's uh, see uh, this uh, Caldo's magic cube or magic square. Okay, so this is not Rubik's cube. <laughs> okay, so for the Caldo's, the study, I mean, studies by Caldo and then by OECD uh, in the 1970s. So this cube shows uh, four aggregates, four indicators. For example, here in the upper side, we have the GDP growth by percentage. At the bottom, we have rate of inflation. In the horizontal line, we have the trade balance in the right and rate of unemployment in the left side. Okay. So here, as you see, we have a scale from 0 to 10, for example, for the GDP growth. Uh, here we have from 0 to 10, you, you see, is in the opposite. So... Uh, the rate of inflation is negatively correlated to the center and the GDP growth is positively correlated to the center of the cube. We have also here in the horizontal the trade, the balance trade, okay, the trade uh, balance by percentage of GDP from, let's say, from minus 2 to 4, okay, and we have the rate of unemployment. Uh, from 12 to 0, as you see again in the opposite side, the row shows from 12 to 0, so it means that is negatively related to, uh, correlated to the center. This is an example of this uh, Caldo's uh, square, magic square. Okay, so let's try to read it. For example, high GDP growth rate would shift the GDP growth level away from the center. So as you see, the larger actually this uh, quadrilateral uh, cube the better the indicators. So if we go away from the center, that means that the GDP growth rate is better. Okay. Uh, in the other, on the other hand, a higher rate of unemployment would shift the unemployment level toward the center. A higher one. So this eight doesn't mean that here we'll get nine, for example, and ten. But at here we have nine, ten, eleven, and twelve, for example. And at here we have seven, six, five, etc., etc. So the larger, the better the unemployment means that the unemployment rate is reduced. Okay, we have a decrease in unemployment rate. Uh, inflation and unemployment are negatively cor negatively correlated with the size of the Caldo's magic square. This means that the high inflation or unemployment rates leads to a reduced area. Okay, so as you see here, we have, for example, if you have higher inflation or higher unemployment, then you have a reduced area of this uh, quadrilateral uh, dimension, okay, of the cube. Alternatively, a positive growth rate and favorable current account balance increase the quadrilateral dimensions. Right. Okay, now let's look at what is the circular flow model. Actually, an economy consists of many groups that participate in various economic activities. So this uh, circular flow model shows the interactions between the economic agents within an economy. So in its simplest form, basic form, we have the interactions between the households and businesses, right? Sellers and buyers, let's say. But in a more realistic, I mean, big picture of the economy, uh, let's say in most modern economies as well, we have, beside now the basic 
uh, circle for model. This might include the interactions between other economic agents, such as uh, uh, governments, the banks. We can include as well foreign markets for the rest of the world, uh, the ROW, the row for foreign markets, right? Actually, economists find it useful to think of these groupings as the sectors of the economy. Um, as you see here, the actors of the economy are uh, the, the economic agents fall into one of the four categories, either households, businesses, government, foreign markets, as well as, uh, for example, uh, the banks, the uh, financial markets. So are the, the four, uh, se the five sectors, let's say, of the economy. We can actually develop the interactions in between those uh, groupings and actors and economic agents in a, another section, okay? To see what are the flows, what are inflows, outflows, what is going and what is coming from uh, each other, okay? Now let's move to the measurements of economic activity. So first of all, we start with gross domestic product and then we define what is gross national product. A gross domestic product, the GDP, is the total market value of all final goods and services produced by factors of production located within nation's borders over a period of time, usually one year. So I emphasize here on all final goods and services produced within nation's borders over a period of time. However, gross national product counts for the total market value of all final goods and services again produced by factor of production owned by a nation over a period of time, usually one year. So while GDP limits the interpretation and the measurement, I mean, of the economy to the geographical borders, GMP, or we use as well in uh, GNI interchangeably, GNI stands for gross uh, national income, uh, this metric actually extends to include the overseas economic activities performed by its nations. So, um, I mean, GDP measures the finished value of goods and services. The finished, I mean, not semi-finished, but should be a finished in the final, I mean, we, we use the final goods and services produced within country's borders by citizens and non-citizens. So if we take for the example of the case of Morocco, citizens uh, and non-citizens, I mean, for example, Moroccans and non-Moroccans. So they are count, counted uh, in the GDP, their, activity, their productive activities, I mean. Uh, however, GNP measures the value of goods and services produced by countries' citizens, both domestically and abroad. Now citizens, Moroccans, either in Morocco or in another, uh, in uh, other countries or, I mean, foreign countries and abroad. So in such case, uh, it takes, I mean, the forms of a compensation of employees, could also take the, um, the form of uh, property, etc., uh, etc. Et anyway, this, uh, this is a subject of national accounts. We can uh, look at those concepts and their calculations and measurements in the next uh, video. Uh, thank you for watching.